Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of 5 Minute History. Last time we talked about the mysterious and possibly fictional Xia Dynasty, but today we will be talking about the Shang Dynasty, so let's go for it. According to the Xia Shangzhou Chronology Project, the Shang Dynasty ruled from about 1600 BC all the way up until about 1046 BC, and unlike the Xia Dynasty, we have plenty of archaeological evidence to back it up. The best evidence that we have to date are the Yin ruins in today's Henan province, which were the remains of the Shang Dynasty's last capital city, and also home to the discovery of China's oldest form of writing the Oracle Bones. Well, the ruins and the Oracle Bones provided archaeologists with the final evidence that the Shang Dynasty was indeed real. They gave us the names of several of the Shang Dynasty rulers, important sacrifices that were made to them, important information about battles, and lots of other information that helped archaeologists establish kind of a rough chronology of the dynasty and prove that it was in fact real. Events of the Shang Dynasty can be found in the Bamboo Annals and also in Sima Qian's Records of the Grand Historian but they do conflict in the details and don't really provide a comprehensive picture of this time period. They tell us of a society that occupied the Yellow River Valley, constantly battled with outsiders, and for the first time in written history, worshipped. There was a centralized government and a hierarchical society which was broken down into different classes depending on that person's contribution to society. Well, let's get down to the events themselves. I only have five minutes so we gotta stick with the highlights. Last time we talked about Jie and what a dick he was and how he was overthrown by Shang Tang. After his victory, Shang Tang became the ruler of this newly established dynasty. He he was considered a good ruler because he seemed to have a genuine concern for his people. He lowered taxes, lowered conscription rates, and also in a particularly difficult situation, gave out money to poor families. He was eventually succeeded by his son, although this is disputed, and shortly after that, the Shang Dynasty entered its Bronze Age. Religious vessels, tools, weapons, and more were made out of bronze, and even today, if you go to many of China's museums, you can see the remarkable bronze work of the Shang Dynasty. Traditional sources tell us some very interesting stories such as the Emperor Taijia, who was so bad when he first became emperor that his own prime minister banished him for three years. And after he came back and started ruling again, he was so awesome that archaeological evidence has found that some people worshipped the prime minister for hundreds of years after that whole event happened. How crazy of a story is that? One of the most highly regarded and unique rulers during this time period was Wu Ding, and there were a lot of reasons for that. First, he did something that not very many Chinese emperors did, and that was he actually went and lived among common people. He did that so that he could get to know people's daily needs, their problems, and their concerns. Later, he married into neighboring tribes in order to get their allegiance. He wrote articles on ritual sacrifice, and he led his armies to many, many victories before he died in the 59th year of his reign. Unfortunately, after Wu Ding, the Shang Dynasty went into decline. None of his successors ever ruled as long, as popularly, or victoriously as he did, and I'm going to tell you two stories to illustrate that point. An emperor named Wu Yi was said to have built a little statue of the God of Heaven, played several games of Liu Bo with it, made it loose many times in a row, and then later destroyed it. Another time, he filled up this leather bag with blood, hung it from a tree, shot it with arrows, and created what he called his shooting heaven. Talk about your issues, right? He was later killed by lightning on one of his hunts, and this was interpreted as the gods killing him because of his irreverence. The last emperor, Zhou Wang, was the craziest of them all. As a younger man, he was supposedly immensely strong, compassionate, good, and intelligent. As he grew older, he took kind of a turn to the dark side. He started torturing people for his and his own wife's arousal, he wasted money, he composed all kinds of irreverent songs, he hosted orgies and all kinds of bad stuff. He built a wine lake and a meat forest. A giant pool was filled with wine and an island was built with trees that were made of meat skewers and he would float around with his concubines in a boat and when they were thirsty they'd drink the wine from the pool and when they were hungry they would grab the meat out of the trees. Obviously that's not okay so Jiang Ziya led an army against Zhou Wang. The Zhou troops overwhelmed the Shang dynasty's poorly trained soldiers, and many of them defected to fight for the Zhou troops. When it became apparent that he was going to lose this battle, Zhou Wang adorned himself in his finest clothes, his finest jewels, went up to his dear terrorist pavilion, and <coughs> set himself on fire, thus ending the Shang dynasty. Alright then, that about wraps it up for the Shang dynasty. Please like and comment this video if you haven't. Please subscribe, and I hope that I'll see you next time with the Zhou dynasty.